guys, it's Beth. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. And we are still on the topic of online classes because although tips and habits can help you, I know that it takes time to apply them and to get used to them. So I think it's very important that I share with you guys something more practical and something that you can use right now, like after you watch this video. So today, I wanted to share some must-have Chrome extensions that some of which I have used for a very long time already and some of which I have just discovered recently. But how I wish I knew earlier because it just makes studying easier. Now, you might think that Chrome extensions aren't really a big deal because you can get by without them. And while that is true, hear me out first because these extensions can help you for days when you're feeling less productive or when you're finding it difficult to organize all of the information that you've searched into one paper or when you just want to get over your assignments more efficiently. So if you want to know the best Chrome extensions that I have for you, then please keep on watching. The first extension on my list is Momentum. I think most of you are very familiar with this already, but Momentum basically replaces your new tab with a personalized dashboard where you can keep track of almost everything that you need. So the picture that you see on the background and the motivational quote at the bottom changes every day. So parang you get a different vibe, a different inspiration every day, which is nice because it's kind of like a refresher. And with momentum, evidently you can see the time and you can add your focus for the day. So for instance, my main goal for today is to film this Chrome extensions video. I can just write it here so it serves as my reminder. Aside from that, you can easily access certain websites that you often use because you can list them here on the top left corner as a bookmark and you can easily keep track of your tasks for the day because you can also have a to-do list here. Now I know that some people prefer a more minimal design rather than something like momentum where everything is displayed so if you feel like this is too much for you if you feel like there's so many things going on you can opt for a minimal design with the extension lag on. So this features a new design every day of just the date, time, and weather so it doesn't have a to-do list it doesn't have a bookmark and it doesn't have a motivational quote. It just displays the bare essentials in a minimal design. Next are tab groups. Now, this isn't an extension, but this is something very worthy to mention about your Chrome browser because I feel like a lot of people aren't very familiar with this. So, you know, when you open all these tabs and sometimes they can get out of hand, you know, you have Google Docs and then you have Facebook and then Google Slides and then Twitter and you just end up going back and forth between these tabs to look for a certain website that you need. Well, Tab groups allow you to organize your tabs and sort them with a custom name and color. So it allows you to group your tabs so they appear more organized in your browser. So for example, I want to have two tab groups, one for social media and one for my paper. As you can see on my browser, I already have a tab group for all the social media websites that I currently have. So if I want to sort the tabs that I use for my paper, I just right click on a tab, add to a new group, rename it with paper. I also like to change the color. And now I have a tab group for my paper. If I have another tab for my paper, again, I just right click on it and add to the group. I just do that until all my tabs are organized and color coded. Now I know that isn't such a huge difference, but I feel like if you see your tabs more organized and grouped into different categories, it's much easier to navigate through them. Now what if you've tried tab groups, but you still find yourself having a hard time navigating through your tabs? Is there another way to organize them? Definitely, and that is through Topi. So if you're working on a paper, of course, it's inevitable that you open 10 or more tabs. And when that happens, it can be challenging to look for a certain website that you need. And let's be honest, it is an additional waste of time to go through all your tabs just to look for a certain website. So with Topi, you can categorize your tabs into different collections. As you can see, I have one collection for my English paper, and I also have another collection for my history paper. So if I need to look for a certain website, I can easily do so by going through my collections. If I open another website that is also for my English paper, I can just drag that into my English paper collection and now I have all my tabs organized. What I like about this is you can also add a note per collection where you can write important details that you need to take note of or a summary of all the websites in that collection. So in case you have a lot of collections already, you can just read your notes to get a grasp of what those websites are. I prefer this more than tab groups just because Toby organizes all your tabs into one page without overloading your browser. Because what Toby does is if you want to group certain tabs, it removes it from your browser and saves it as a collection in Toby. Unlike with tab groups, kasi it groups your tabs, but it still stays in your browser. So it's likely na mago overload pa in your browser mo with all the websites that you've opened. So if you have more than three tasks with five or more references each, it's better to use Toby. But if you have one or two tasks with minimal references, 
Fab groups will work fine. The next extension on my list is my bib, which is a citation generator. This is pretty self-explanatory, but my bib basically references all your academic papers, journals, websites, and articles for you. So instead of going to another website or doing your citations all by yourself, which you can definitely do by the way, my bib already offers to reference for you in just one click. So let's say I have this paper. I just click on my bib and you already have the citation ready for you to copy. It also tells you whether the source is credible or not because sometimes sites or journal articles have missing information on them. So that's very helpful. And you can also change the formatting style to whichever format your school uses. I just use APA because it's mostly what we use in school. What's great about this is if you have a list of sources that you want to reference, you can simply save to project and you can choose whichever heading you want the reference to be in. After that, you can download the reference list and you're done. I feel like an easy access to a citation generator makes a huge difference because usually referencing is the last thing that we do when writing a paper. But when you do it after finishing your paper, sometimes you lose your sources. So it's helpful that you have a citation generator at the top of your browser in just one click because you wouldn't feel the need to push back referencing at the very last stage of writing your paper. The next extension on my list is Forest. Of course, what is a productivity slash school related video without a time tracker? So similar to the app that you have on your phone, Forest improves your focus and productivity by removing your access to certain websites so that you stay engaged and focused on your tasks. There are two ways by which Forest works, blockless mode and allow this mode. When you're on blockless mode, you cannot visit the websites that you listed. So if you listed Facebook and Twitter, you cannot go to Facebook and Twitter. When you're on allow this mode on the other hand, you can only visit the websites that you listed. So if you listed JSTOR and Wikipedia, you can only go to JSTOR and Wikipedia. Personally, I use blockless mode more than allow list mode because I feel like there's more liberty when it comes to the websites that you can visit. Not the social media websites, huh, but academic references. The next extension that I have for you is Weva. Honestly, I wish I'd known this extension earlier than I did because this is so, so helpful. So basically, Weva allows you to highlight websites and PDFs with any color that you'd like. Again, let's make up a scenario. You know when you're writing a paper and you have 10 references all from different websites? Obviously, you're not going to use all of the information in each website. You're just going to get a snippet of each. Now, sometimes when you have several references, it can get overwhelming and you lose what information you need in that website. So with Weva, you can highlight that information and save it for later. For example, I want to highlight this information from this website. I can choose which color I want the highlight to be. And when you click Weva, it saves the website and the information that you highlighted. You can also organize all your highlights into folders and subfolders, which is just great because it's easier to look for information. I think Weva is a great tool for when you're writing a paper or when you're simply studying because you know what information you need and it saves you from spending minutes trying to look for a certain paragraph or sentence. Next is Grammarly. Grammarly is a writing tool that notifies you of any error in grammar, spelling, tone, punctuation, and even plagiarism. So if you're finding it difficult to proofread your academic papers, you can go to its website Grammarly, paste your paper there, and it automatically checks for any error. This also also works as an extension to your Google Docs and Gmail, so this is very helpful in case you're not very familiar with academic writing or in case you don't have enough time to proofread your paper. The extension only comes as a free version of the app, so you can purchase the premium version if you want to, but then again, the free version is already so, so helpful. The last extension that I have for you is Pocket. The extension is synced to the app which you can download across all your devices. So Pocket allows you to save articles, websites, and even videos that you want to view or read later. Later. So for instance, your groupmate sends you this certain article but you can't read it at the moment because you're busy doing another project. What you can do is you can click Pocket at the top of your browser and it already saves that website for later. You can view this on your phone or on your tablet because it's already saved in the app. So I think this is a very helpful tool to avoid losing references that you'll be needing in the future. So those are all of the must-have Chrome extensions that I have for you. I will also be making another video on some apps and websites that you need for school next week so be sure to stay tuned for that if you enjoyed this video please don't hesitate to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already thank you so much and i will see you in my next videos bye